So in this chapter, we will learn about content provider. So what are content provider? But before answering this question, I may want to ask another question, which is how we can exchange information between process. The first idea is to send intent. I send an intent and inside of this intent, I put a lot of information in the extra part and then I can interchange information between my application. Doing this will be hard and moreover we will have huge intents we, we circulate on the intent bus so this is not a good solution. The second possibility is to share information among database. Here we still have a problem. Why? Because since every application is a an user in Android, we have to ensure that the other application will be allowed to uh, access to my database, but I, I do not know the, the ID of my other application. So this can be tricky to set up. So this is not a good solution. The third solution would be to use files. So I have a file inside of my application and I use this file to exchange information between my, my various applications. The problem with that is we must ensure that every application will write the file correctly. We have to agree on some syntax and so on on our file. And if there is some malicious application that just erase the file, what, what can I do? The second option is what, what if the application is uninstalled? Since files are written inside of application directories, if I just remove the application hosting the file, the other application can no longer communicate. So we have to find a way to, to have this inter-process communication. So the solution is content provider. So here we can see that there is the application with the database and if there are other applications, we want to build this square, the, the upper left part of the drawing, we want to build this component in order to communicate with the other application. So we can see that the, the provider will be plugged onto the database. So this will be an indirection to the database, but we can safely return some component that can then target the database. So the advantage of using a, a content provider is, first of all, what if I decide to change my database to another one? If I have hard-coded all of my information, I have to change all my classes in order to be able to uh, propagate the change. Here, since I have one level of indirection, I just have to change the database and update, consequently, the, the provider. Okay, so this is the first argument to have uh, this uh, provider. This is a nice abstraction. Okay, the second advantage of using content provider is that they can offer some granularity of permission. So if you want to fix specific permission for an application, it's possible. While the database is read-write for everyone, or read or write, but here we can have fine-grained permission on uh, the data. It's it has also an advantage, which is it masks many sources. You may have multiple databases inside of your application, but you want your clients or the other application to see it as only one database. This is the way we can offer a unified vision for the other application. Okay. So, 
until now I have discussed of, about content provider, but content provider relies on cursor. So what is a cursor? A cursor is a wraparound read-write data. So it offers creation, removal, updating and deleting some entry inside of our database or inside of our model, if you want. And all cursor have to implement android.database.cursor. So let's have a look, for instance, to the contact structure. The contact structure is defined like that. So we have a contact, which store all the contacts. Then we have a row contact, which store summary for each contact. And then we have some data for each contact. So for instance, mail received from this contact, SMS received from this contact, phone call received from this contact, and so on. OK? So here, there is a database. So this database is abstracted through a provider. So we can build a cursor that will help to manipulate these three elements. So to have access to the contact, we can have this small snippet of code. For instance, we can modify the Android file Android manifest file.xml here to say I will use the permission of reading contacts. Then I can build a request. So to do that, uh, I just grab the content resolver from the operating system and then I can have a query on it. So the query will return a cursor. And so in this query, I just have from information about contact. OK, and I, guess I can pass some parameters uh, to filter contacts. So now that I have a cursor on the contact database, remember that this is not directly a cursor on the database, but this is an abstraction of your database, we can iterate through the different values of my cursor. And for instance, I say if the cursor is not empty, so if there is a result to my query, what's happening? I will have a loop to iterate through the different element of my uh, answer. And then I can get column, index, contact, contract, what is it? So here, the get column index will abstract the notion of you are manipulating a database. So since we want to provide the user the impression to man manipulate a database, we have some get column index, which say, OK, you can go to this column in order to have the information you are interested in. And so then we can convert it into a string and then have a toast displaying the contact. OK? So now we may want to define our own content provider. So until now, I have described what are content provider, what are cursor, and how to manipulate provider, existing provider. So if I want to define my own content provider, first of all, I have to define my own URI. OK? So here, this will be the name where, where you can target me in order to grab information. So now, to implement a content provider, I have to define a set of methods. OnCreate, GetType, Delete, Insert, Update. So on the bottom part, the three last methods are clearly the method to manipulate my database. OnCreate will just prepare the content provider, and GetType will only return the meme type for the URI. Okay? In other words, what will be the result? So let's first create a database. In Android, this is quite simple. Like in Java, we just declare a field which is SQL database. And we give a name to this database. 
and we have table names we can specify the number the version number of our database and then I decide to build a static field which will handle the creation of my database so then I have I can define the the core of my database just extending SQLite open helper I have a, a constructor which does nothing then on the onCreate method I just execute the SQL code which is create database table and if we go back we can observe that this refers to the string which is create table plus table name id integer and so on so this is the classical field we have to fill when we build the database so this is for the on create on upgrade i can observe that i also create an sql request and this request will be on the table name and executed inside of the database and so on so now that I have my database that work, I can define my content provider. So first of all, we can observe that the provider name is, on the, is declared on the top of my class. So this provider name is the name I have defined here. OK, then I define some URL built through the provider name then I define a, a lot of static field and the two fields that are relevant the three fields that are relevant are the URI matcher this URI matcher will help us to build results so here we can observe that the get type method which have to return the mem, the, the mem type of um, of our, of our component will perform some match on the get type method. Then we can have a look to the onCreate method. The onCreate method will instantiate the new database and if this database has been successfully instantiated, okay, we can return, otherwise we have to propagate some error. We have the delete uh, method now, and the delete method will just perform a database.delete when the URI code is a good one, okay, and so on. And then we can have the insert method, with, uh, which just change the content of my database. So now that we have done that, we can implement the query method. This query method will return the cursor. So this is the way the other application can manipulate our database. So here we can observe that we will build a new SQLite query builder and we will set up tables and according to what we want to do, we will interrogate the database and then return the cursor. So now that we have done the database and the cursor, what we want to do is to insert an element uh, inside of the database. To do that, we just have to put values inside of our database. And finally, we have to modify the Android manifest file.xml in order to set up fields for my, for, for my provider. So now if we have a look to client code, what's happening? In client code, we will have some onclick display names method, for instance, that will just init the loader. Once we have done that, we can override the onCreateLoader method, which is just a request to have a cursor over the database. 
Okay, and then we can return this cursor. Once we have done that, there is a callback which is called, and this callback will be onload finished. Other, in other words, it means that I ask for the creation of a cursor. This cursor will help me to modify the database, but since it may have some instantiation and so on, it's an asynchronous message. When the setup is ready, I have a callback, which is onload finished with the new cursor. And then I can display a set of results. Here I append into a string the, the ID and the name of my, my elements in the tab. So to sum up, content provider are mostly used on database. So if you have a database, you may want to build a content provider upon it in order to ease the manipulation of your database. But you can also build a cursor over classes. So you, you, you are not forced to use database when you use cursor. The good way to use cursor is that you can have fine-grained permission. You can say, I give you the grant to modify or to read or to read this specific field of my database, but you don't give a full access to your database to some application, since you do not know if this application is malicious or not. And access will be done through the content resolver. And now, with these slides, you can build your own database.